In this video, we will walk through the installation of the Megalive dual mounting plate for mounting target lock in the Mega360. The dual mounting plate will allow you to install your Megalive imaging target lock on one side of your trolling motor and the Mega360 on the other. If you have a trolling motor stabilizer installed, you will first need to uninstall it. You will reinstall it after you have completed the installation of your Mega Live and Mega360. See the installation guide that was included with your trolling motor or visit MincotaMotors.com for instructions. Align the plate below the bow guard and line up the holes on the plate with the threaded holes on the bow guard. Install the six included bolts through the plate and into the bow guard. Hand tighten until secure. Be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we will install the target lock control box. Align the control box over the mounting plate with the Humminbird logo facing out and the power connector inside the larger cutout into the mounting plate. Install the six included screws through the plate and into the control box using the provided Allen wrench. Be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll connect the target lock shaft assembly to the mounting plate. Install the four screws into the threaded holes on the steering housing and do not fully tighten. Slide the bolts into the plate slots. Hand tighten the bolts using a 3 8 inch wrench. Be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll walk through the process for installing a Mega360 imaging transducer on your Minn Kota Ultrax trolling motor. It is important to read the instructions completely and understand the mounting guidelines before you start the installation. The trolling motor should be in the fully retracted flat position on the boat deck for this installation. Disconnect the motor from all sources of electrical power. Test run the transducer cables from the chosen mounting location on the trolling motor to the control head. Test run the power cables from the chosen mounting location on the trolling motor to the fuse panel. It is also important to consider the following. The Mega360 Imaging Transducer Pod is powered separately from the control head. It must be connected to a switch where it can be powered on when the boat is underway and powered off when it is docked. The cable should be routed through an established routing system on the boat, in an area with minimal interference, without sharp edges, obstacles, or obstructions that may damage the cables. The cables will move with the trolling motor when it is deployed and retracted so it's very important to allow enough length for the movement. Next, we will assemble the Mega360 mount. Align the left screw or right screw under the center hole of the dual mounting plate. Slide the screw into the plate slot and then slide the other two screws into the outside slots of the plate. Hand tighten the screws and be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we we'll install the Mega360 pod. Route the cables up through the trolling motor mount and bracket. Use an Allen wrench to install the two socket bolts on the bracket where the pod shaft is installed. Tighten the bolts so that the pod shaft is fully secure and won't drop when it is deployed in the next step. Be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll walk through the adjustment of the pod height. Deploy the trolling motor and loosen the socket bolts on the mount where the pod shaft is installed. Adjust the pod shaft up or down so it meets the following height requirements. The pod must be mounted approximately six inches below the water line, and the pod must be mounted at least one inch above the tip of the trolling motor prop. The pod shaft needs to protrude at at least one to two inches above the bracket when it is installed. If the pod is installed too close to the prop, it will be damaged. Ensure there are at least one inch of clearance between the pod and the trolling motor prop. Mega360 damage caused by the pod being installed too close to the trolling motor prop is not covered by the product warranty. Turn the pod shaft until the round end of the transducer points in the direction of travel. The center line of the transducer should be parallel with the center line of the boat. When the transducer position is finalized, hand tighten the socket bolts equally and completely so the pod shaft is fully secure and won't drop or rotate during operation. Tighten each bolt 
an additional quarter turn, or even a half turn, and be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll install our collar clamp. After you have established the pod height is no longer than one inch from the tip of the trolling motor prop, install the collar clamp to prevent the trolling motor from hitting the transducer pod. Slide the collar up the base of the bow guard. Use an Allen wrench to fully tighten the socket bolts until they are secure. Be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we will route the Mega360 cables. Connect the power cables to the power cable connector on the pod shaft and connect the transducer cable to the transducer cable connector on the pod shaft. The connectors are keyed to prevent reverse installation, so be careful not to force the connectors. Hand tighten the screw nuts on each connector. Rotate the cables to the side of the trolling motor over the bow to the chosen connection location. Leave sufficient slack in the cables to allow for full movement of the trolling motor during normal operation. On Apex and Solix, insert the other end of the transducer cable to the sonar port on the control head. Hand tighten the screw nut. On Helix models, install the transducer adapter cable to the transducer port on the Helix control head. Route the power cables to the main switch or fuse panel, usually located near the console. If you must connect to a battery, connect to a battery switch, which is not included. The Mega Live Imaging Target Lock and Mega360 Imaging Transducer should be connected to a main switch, fuse panel, or a battery switch. Humminbird does not recommend connecting to a battery without a fuse and a switch. Some boats have a 24 or 36 volt electrical system, but the Mega Live Imaging Transducer must be connected to a 12 volt DC power supply. Humminbird is not responsible for over voltage or over current failures. The Mega Live Imaging Target Lock must have adequate protection through the proper selection and insulation of a 5 amp slow blow fuse. A 10 foot power cable is included to supply power to the Megalive Imaging Transducer. You may shorten or lengthen the cable using a 12 gauge multi-stranded copper wire. If you removed your motor stabilizer prior to installing your Megalive, reinstall it now through the Megalive plate using the provided screws with lock washers. It may be necessary to shorten your motor stabilizer. See the installation guide that was included with your trolling motor or visit MinkotaMotors.com for more information. For more information and other instructional videos, be sure to visit us at Humminbird.com or find us on YouTube.